The legendary San Andreas Fault runs about 800 miles through some of the most populated areas in the continental United States. What makes it so dangerous is the fact that the southern portion of the fault did not experience any major earthquake for more than 300 years. So what does that mean to you if, let's say you live in Southern California or literally anywhere else in the United States? Let's start with a basic question. What exactly is a fault line? Well, imagine that at the beginning you have a large section of the Earth's crust. This giant block of rock experiences external thermal forces from within the planet's interior, which pushes one side of the rock away from the other. As soon as enough pressure is built, this block of rock will experience a tiny sudden fracture, an earthquake. Given about half a million years, this fracture will become dozens of miles in length and it would be considered a young fault. Typically, a young fault, like the San Jacinto Fault Zone, would register more frequent small earthquakes because the rocks in this area are able to crack more often. These quakes can't become too large because the fault line is jagged and it contains lots of obstacles and asperities. So when the fault begins to break, the rupture front line often meets a point of resistance and it stops. What makes the San Andreas Fault unique and dangerous is the fact that it is considered a pathetically weak fault. It is so weak that once an earthquake happens, it cannot be stopped and so the rupture grows to be very big. It's not surprising why the San Andreas Fault can generate earthquakes up to 7 or even 8 on the Richter scale. This old geological feature existed for so long and experienced so many powerful earthquakes to the point where all the asperities in it became smooth, hence the lack of small earthquakes on the main line. A smooth fault requires less stress to be triggered and that's the answer why the San Andreas Fault experiences major earthquakes regularly, in average about one event every 100 years. It would be very concerning to see a magnitude 5 or 6 earthquake on the San Andreas Fault because that would significantly increase the chances of a larger quake in the next coming weeks. A magnitude 6 quake could easily be considered a foreshock that will set things in motion and trigger the adjacent portion of the fault to rupture. People often like to make predictions about when the next San Andreas mega quake will hit. We are creatures of habit and love to find patterns that give us a sense of security and understanding. But the reality is that earthquake occurrence is reasonably well described by the Poisson statistical distribution. Each event in this distribution is independent from each other, which means that the time passed from the last major earthquake is irrelevant in trying to make a yearly prediction. What we know for sure is that given a certain location and enough time, this quake will happen. Here's a map of the past quakes on the southern section of the San Andreas Fault in the last 1,000 years. The first event happened in 1100, give or take 65 years, and it was considered a major event around magnitude 8. The second event happened in 1346, give or take 17 years, and it was less serious. The third major earthquake occurred in 1480 and it was most likely also close to a magnitude 8. The fourth rupture on the southern San Andreas Fault happened in 1680 and it was much smaller compared to the previous ones. The fifth major earthquake took place in 1812 near the San Bernardino Mountains and it was about a magnitude 7 plus. And surprisingly, only 45 years later, in 1857, the sixth major quake, a magnitude 7.9, ruptured the fault for about 225 miles. According to the US Geological Survey, the annual probability of a major quake on the southernmost part of the San Andreas Fault is about 1%. 
The probability was increased from the previous one-third of a percent as a result of the Ridgecrest earthquake series in 2019, just about 150 miles north. So let's try a fun statistics experiment together. Assuming that the annual probability of a major quake is 1% along the southern section of the fault, when could the next one happen? For this purpose, I brought in front of me 100 ping pong balls. 99 of them are white, and only one is red colored. The last major quake happened in 1857, so for each year after that, I will be drawing a ball. If it is a white ball, that means no earthquake happened. If I draw the red ball, then a major earthquake happened. I will repeat this experiment multiple times and see what kind of a discrepancy I get between the results in order to prove the randomness of these events. 1858 1859 60 61 Okay, this is actually pretty crazy. Um, Okay, I think I didn't shuffle them correctly. Okay, let me... Oh my god. So, um, it seems that the next earthquake should be occurring in 1874, uh, um, but I mean, you, you look at the, the history and then there's no earthquake in 1874, but again, you see how random these things are. You never know when one can strike. But let's try it again and see what kind of results we get. Twenty-three. So we actually got to the current year. We are in 2023 and I'm still drawing white balls. No earthquake. Eighty. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. 2083! I finally draw the red colored ball, which technically would mean an earthquake would happen. But wow! This took more than 230 years in order to get to the next quake, which is kind of crazy, right? You think that you have a 1% uh, probability each year, and yet there's 230 years in between, and then you get the earthquake. This was such an interesting experiment. Just seeing the vast discrepancy that you can get between these numbers, it's, it is mind-blowing. So what does that tell us? Well. It tells us that earthquakes are totally random. You could literally go um, five years after major quake and get another major quake on the San Andreas Fault, or you could go 300 plus years and still waiting for the major quake to happen. So is that telling us something? Well, no, it's not telling us anything because this is just sheer probability, right? So you could go easily a hundred more years without having a major quake and uh, you know, things will be fine. <laughs> I hope this experiment gave you an interesting insight about the random nature of earthquakes. So what will happen when the big one hits Southern California? The consequences of a major earthquake near the Los Angeles area will be devastating. First, anything that sits right on top of the fault line will be displaced by about 15 feet. This enormous offset will literally tear buildings down and any type of other infrastructure such as highways, train tracks, gas pipes, water lines and dams. Here's a video I made just a week ago while visiting the San Bernardino Mountains area where the San Andreas Fault crosses one of the most important connection points near the LA Basin. So here I am right on top of the 
San Andreas Falls. The San Andreas Falls passes right under this highway. Right underneath this highway. And there's major pipelines over here, gas pipelines. There could be anywhere between 20 to 30 feet of offset if the San Andreas Fault breaks. Secondly, intense long shaking will be associated with this earthquake. If you are anywhere between 5 to 10 miles from the fault rupture, you will most likely experience a severe ground shaking intensity of 9 on the Mercalli scale. Here's a couple of 3D simulations that I've made, which I have already published on my channel, that show the exact effects of this type of shaking. Anything else located between 10 to 20 miles from the fault rupture will experience a strong ground shaking equivalent to 8 on the Mercalli scale. This is enough to cause heavy objects in your house to overturn. It would move poorly built houses off of their foundations and cause most unreinforced masonry buildings to collapse. Thirdly, the shaking will cause soil liquefaction in areas where the water table is high, generally in areas next to the beach. This phenomenon basically turns the soil into quicksands, and so a building could easily lose its stability and collapse. What is probably more concerning is that the building codes were created with the sole purpose of making sure that a structure does not collapse and kill people. So in the next earthquake, many buildings will be just on the verge of collapsing, but not collapse. If at the time of construction a building did not have enough regular inspection, there is a chance this building could have construction flaws, which could actually cause it to collapse. Similarly, even if the building was built up to code, but the shaking was underestimated for that particular area, that building might as well crumble down. Thousands of buildings will practically be unusable after a major quake and lots of people will become homeless. All business activity will be disrupted for months to come, perhaps years, and many trading routes will cease to exist. The Los Angeles area is one of the biggest commercial hubs in the world. If this stops working, we will basically get in a situation similar to what happened in the Suez Canal in 2021, but 10 times worse, maybe even more. The canal was only blocked for 6 days, but a quake in the Los Angeles area could bring everything to a stall for months. Around 90% of world trade is carried out by the sea. The Los Angeles area contains the two busiest ports in the United States, Port of Los Angeles and Port of Long Beach. They will most likely stop operating and so this will trigger a cascade of events across all the United States and you will feel their effects too. Many businesses that need imported goods will have to delay their services for months ahead. An extreme shock to an LA-based business will impact its clients and suppliers as well, which could be located on the eastern coast of the United States for example. If these shocks start propagating from a firm to its customers and then to its customers' customers, they may also have a negative effect to the entire economy. Food prices will grow at a national level because 50% of the fruits, nuts and vegetables are imported from California. There is even a small chance that the states surrounding California might lose electricity for a short period of time. If the Los Angeles airport stops functioning, there will be travel delays all across the country and many disruptions even at an international level. This airport is among the world's busiest airports in terms of passengers and cargo traffic. California is a top exporter in the nation of computers and electronic products. If we cannot get them anymore, businesses will have to find another supplier from another state. That could also mean increased computer prices, an increased price to some electronics and shipping delays. If your computer breaks, 
you might have to wait an additional week or more to get the parts that you need. If you can think of other national disruptions that a major earthquake in Southern California could cause, please let me know in the comments below. I'm sure that many other viewers from other states will find your comments valuable. The next major San Andreas earthquake will be a total disaster. If you happen to live in California, there's many proactive measures you can take right now to reduce the risk and the negative consequences associated with an earthquake. Make sure to check the video that I have attached below in the description if you want to find more about how you can protect yourself in advance from a major earthquake. I have been working with the team at California Seismograph in order to create this video, so I think that will be something very important for you to watch. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit the like button so that more people can have access to this information. My channel's goal is to bring more earthquake awareness around the world by simulating earthquakes on a variety of 3D buildings and structures. I would love for you to also be part of this community and make a small positive impact together by sharing this information with your friends and family and see what they have to say about this. Thanks for watching once again. Take care and stay safe. Make sure you get home in one piece.